educational and ranked to GM series are not educational enough. 90% of these videos are not even close to being educational, as it's just an excuse to smurf and make people watch it. High level players are much better at intuitively understanding the game, and it's almost impossible for a low elo player to catch every single decision a good player makes and try to replicate them in their own games. And it's just physically impossible for a player to comment every single one of their action during a game, so lots of actual educational information is missed in unranked GM type of videos. This is Gasan. He is a 30-year-old Platinum 1 Wrecking Ball player who wants to become good at the game, and I am willing to help him. In this series, I'm gonna be coaching Gasan in depth, sharing all of my knowledge with him and you. Like in Ratatouille, I'm gonna become a rat in Gasan's hat and guide him, but he's gonna cook with his own hands. The problems that my student may face can be relevant to you, and I am gonna try and help him solve them, so this is actually educational. In these videos, I hope to prove that with the right mentality and willingness to study, a process of learning your heroes can be engaging and fun. And if you want to follow our journey, please like, subscribe and comment your thoughts. Enjoy the video! No, yeah, I like, uh, to be honest, a lot of people don't like push maps, but for ball, they're fun. Yeah, they're so fun. Like, it's so easy to flank behind them and stall mm -hmm. the card for a long time. <laughs> I like that we're flanking. But you kind of... I should have went back door. Yeah. Uh, you kind of made a hasty decision. Because he saw me, I didn't. Yeah. Uh, no, it's not really about that. You saw the Wrecking Ball and your initial reaction is just to push him. Yeah. Let's just think for a moment, like, what would it bring us? What value? Yes, you're right. It's an ego. Yeah, not really, right? Yeah. And we don't even really know about the enemy team, their comp, their positioning. But, you know, this is, this is kind of a problem. And also, this is kind of a problem. They don't even see you like from main or even from here. I see always like when I'm running around to hide, once I've been caught with my pants down, I'm, I go in. I don't seem to like, <laughs> I know that. <laughs> okay, okay. So when you get caught uh, with your pants down, just pull up your I pants and, fix <laughs> and, <go Yeah>. better. <laughs> and f find a better position. <laughs> So you see, it, it could be a good fight. You still have time to get to get back to Mega and to look for a better fight. What I like to do on these maps, I go like this and stand here mm -hmm. and just hear people passing by. And once they pass, I get behind them and boop them into my team and pile drive. And that's more often than not is a good fight. Because we made a hasty decision before that, when we pushed that Wrecking Ball, we didn't quite scout the enemy team, we don't know... I think you didn't quite scout what DPS they had. And this happens. I was doing a great job until my team accused me of trolling. I bet a DM doesn't. I was in the enemy backline minding my own business. I bet a DM Redesant! Hi, I'm Coach Redesant. Did you know that you can become a good player? My intuition says you can, and so do I. I believe that every Overwatch player has rights to get coached in depth and have fun learning your favorite heroes. And that's why I made a Discord channel where you can seek for help and get it. Better DM Redesant. Coach Redesant, your GM tech main playing mostly vegetable, always focused on improving, playing consciously and helping others to find. Join our official Discord to get coached, ask Redesant anything you want, and find new friends. Enjoy the video, like and subscribe. How do you usually play against Sombras? Um, I try, I try, I probably don't do it as often. Once I see her, I try to push her. But the idea is to probably let her do something else, something to somebody else first. Watch from... Because if I'm in the middle, she hacks me out of my slams and everything. So I let her do, like, try to affect... So I have on my team, like, yeah, she might hack the Mercy. She might hack, like, uh, the Zenyatta. Oh, when she does that, go after her. Like, bait. Because I've I, I noticed that's what other...
people do uh, if they're playing a different character or if um say it's um a mercy that i can't get to i go after her other support to get her to come to heal the other support and then i go after the mercy so like i try to like use bait i guess to get the sombra out but what if she just translocates back to a safe position and then gets back to your uh, back line i guess i really wouldn't know what to do if she did, keeps on doing well that's the thing i end up just like always feel like it, the better thing i can do since i'm not like confident and if i if i don't kill them then good i got them off for the time being but to keep my eyes open that's just end up, what i end up doing uh you know when playing wrecking ball i uh talking about target priority i mm. think about two things is my target diveable or not mm. let's say if i'm looking for baptiste he's a diveable target right he mm. doesn't have much mobility well probably he has a lot of survivability but if i go in and make him use his cooldowns and watch me for some time then i bring a lot of value I, I i may still kill him but if i have a non diveable target let's say reaper or tracer you can't really run it down main and pile drive them right because they yeah. will punish you in that case i'm looking for opportunities to bring more value by not actually dealing damage and killing people but by just distracting them like if you're playing a self a safe distance between you and Reaper, and he gets distracted at you, and he's trying to chase you, waste a lot of time, waste his bullets. Then you're doing a great job. So yeah, that's uh, that's the dynamics of Wrecking Ball. You can become a main damage dealer in your team, main killer, but you might as well just play smart, more passively probably, and you may deal less damage, deal less kills but you will most likely die less and bring value by distracting people what am i leading to uh we have sombra she's not really a diveable target oh i know what you mean yeah she's not really a diveable target and if we try to come and dive her or peel for our backlight to try and punish her she mm. just backs up then, then she gets back again so if, I think what I would do then is I would be just distracting the team. You I mean you, you pretty much said it. So rolling through the team back and forth. So if the Sombra does dive my team, my team is not so distracted themselves. I'm fucking yeah. up the other team, like bothering them, that they can just focus the Sombra. As you mentioned, if enemy Sombra comes to your backline, then you may mm -hmm. come to their backline and make them distracted right mm -hmm. and so that's kind of a equal fight where the enemy team gets distracted by you and your team gets distracted by sombra then it just becomes a, a trading thing yeah a trading thing and kind of a skill issue which uh, one of the characters creates more distractions creates more space but mm -hmm. there are more ways of playing against sombra that i like more so um let's say this one you see Mm -hmm. You are the only character in your team that is able to go so far into enemy backline and kill this. And uh, so if you look for this while enemy Sombra is in your backline and you destroy this, then she gets stuck and your team is now able to kill her actually. Not get distracted, but just kill her. You may run it down main and try to pile drive like bab and anna let's say but you might get punished and your team is not really in a position to help you so what i like to do is just to go around the map looking for help uh, for the translocator and destroying it before going in it's uh, interesting it's a thing that i talked about a little before we try to earn the right to dive you can't really dive mm. enemies that have Sombra. So you are earning the right to dive by destroying the translocator. And you have mobility and survivability to do this. And your teammates don't. So yeah, go for it. And right after you destroy, just go into enemy backline. And then you can try and obliterate them. 
I never really thought of that. I mean, to be honest, it's just because I don't, I think I don't, I don't pay too much attention. I don't know how effective it is. Does she get it back immediately if I shoot it? How does that work? Does she see that I destroyed it? Well, let's say enemy Sombra is in your backline and you got a good timing of destroying it. I think mm. she doesn't have her translocator for a few seconds. So she gets stuck in your team. Mm -hmm. And even if she does, like she would have to oh, throw, throw it somewhere, yeah, somewhere, somewhere, around somewhere close. Somewhere close mm -hmm. where your teammates will well, still be able to kill her after the translocation. I get what you're saying. Well, because when she presses it, she's just gonna throw it anyway. She's not gonna realize. Yeah, and if your translocator is in another part of the map, then your teammates have nothing to do with this. They can't really do anything about it. I get it. So that's why searching for it is so effective. I never really just paid it that much attention. Uh, if you watch, uh, again, Eto's gameplay or Chasm's gameplay, I would say any professional Wrecking Ball players of art, they always go for Translocator and try to kill it before engaging enemy team. Uh, that's why I said, oh, Adam, when you were explaining that, because I've always seen them do it and they call it out. They're like, no Translocator, and then... Yeah. Like, because, uh, I always wondered some... why it was such a big deal. Yeah, okay. That's like the main strength of Sombra to get into enemy backline and safely get back at low HP. Mm -hmm. But if she doesn't have that strength, then she's kind of useless. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> Your mercy is different. <laughs> this guy doesn't care. <laughs> you know, I... <laughs> I've had a habit of this uh, boop, looping mm -hmm. from side to side. I actually don't really recommend you doing it like Good. Oh, really? Often. Okay. Yeah, it's honestly a new habit that I've tried to start. Because I feel like, yeah, my deep, my, when I have to do something like this, uh -huh. someone had mentioned to me that I'm letting go of the grapple too early that I could get more out of it. And then I felt like that was me lacking so that maybe I can get more damage. I know I'm not a DPS, but that if I'm going to fight someone, that could hit them the back and forth can hit them decently and i've seen some people do it but i guess yeah tell me talk to me i guess i understand what you're saying about letting go of the grapple too early i would say it's kind of a high level play mm -hmm. it's just uh, what i wanted to say is uh, when you use your grapple for such a long time like this just to deal damage you're kind of stuck in this area for six seconds and that's enough for enemies to react to your actions like, you see Sombra is uh, about to hack you, you just kind of got lucky that, that you got to boop her. But if she did, then you would you would suffer a lot. If you want to fight enemies, then try to boop them once, let go of the grapple, and mm -hmm. shoot them in their face. That okay. way, right after you boop people, <coughs> your cooldown starts to reset. Oh, okay. I you get that, that's see? a good point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's it. Yeah, it's, not, it's not waiting. So in, in this kind of situation, I would. So this was a good boop. And right now I would stop and get in that room, the red room, mm -hmm. and try to shoot Torbjorn from there because it's a safe position for <laughs> you. And uh, Sombra doesn't have side, uh, side lines on you. She can't hack you in that room. Mm -hmm. And if you feel any danger, then you just go like this. And my grapple would be off cooldown by then. Yeah, yeah. I get what you're saying. 100% now. I mean, it really depends on situations. Sometimes you do want to prolong your grapple, but I would say in this kind of situation, you uh, would like... I, like, I let her die. If it wasn't, I get you, like, if I was actually drawing their fire by shooting at them, yeah, the you mercy would probably would have been do. Lot. You would probably do more... I get what you're okay. I get what you're saying. She's a main threat, right? So you have to earn the right to uh, to dive. These were nice mines, actually. Tell me why. The position is perfect. Everyone is locked in. Who's under the slam, like the Torb, but my team is also right there. So yeah. Like, she can th she can throw a grenade. He can throw the Discord. I yeah. even have my. My Sombra is next to me, I think. Yeah, so I would like to see more of these kind of fights uh, from your perspective. When you, have, when mm -hmm. you have your teammates who are actually able to help you 
and mm. there are uh, lots of diveable targets like uh, Torbjorn, Anna, or Bab, and you're going for them. And you're uh, and you're also contesting the point, so these were great points. <laughs> Are there any better targets right now? I mean, yeah, he's discorded, but... I mean, now looking at it, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I kind of just dive to his... Um, cause she, she probably is going to get a line of sight on him. There's still the Torb, so... I probably should have died the Anna and the Torb. Yeah, I think you killed Torbjorn, but you, uh, that Anna is too close, like for a long period of time. You can just steal him. I throw a grenade. I know what you mean. Like, I'm, I'm, it's not a, I'm not like, it's not crazy bad, but I could have done something better. Yeah, it's a, it's a good trait when you're playing. <laughs> when you think that something is going wrong, let's say you're shooting an enemy tank you can mm. quickly think like is there anything better that than i am doing right now that i would be able to do and bring more value because the thing is about uh shooting tanks even if they are discorded you're wasting too much resources on a single target which could be used on multiple squishes in the enemy team let's say to kill a wrecking ball, you have to shoot 160 bullets. I mean, bullets are mm -hmm. also resources, great resources. And mm -hmm. those 160 bullets can be used to kill at least two uh, squishes. Mm -hmm. Your damage and your cooldown value is very dependent on the target that you're using it on. Uh, let's say if you're pal driving a wrecking ball, he's uh, receiving less than 100 damage. And it's like... a 15% of his health, while if you're pile driving an Ana, you're dealing 100 damage and it's a half of your half of her HP. And that's a big deal for her. I know what you mean. Like it's um, kind of like what you're saying about the people who say, well, I have high stats, but what am I doing wrong? Yeah. It's because you dealt out a lot of damage. Yeah. Where did you, where did you put it? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Again, is there a better target? 100%. It's just like you see, you see it after. Look at this, look at this. This is so juicy. Your Sombra. Whoa. Yeah, she's all in there. Oh, oh my, my god. god. So beautiful. That's if you were up. there, I think this fight would be over. It's just when people shoot tanks, it's usually, usually just because it's easier to aim at them and you know, ding, ding, ding. It's. Uh, yeah, you feel like you're doing something. Yeah. You feel like you're backing them off. It's not because I think I'm gonna kill him. I mean, uh, I feel like yeah, exactly. Like I'm, I'm, I'm pestering him. It's like heat. Of, it's combined of heat of the moment, your tunnel vision, and yeah, I guess you're right though. You yeah, can we, get so much more. We have to try and um, look less for that ding, 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 mm -hmm. and look for a single ding that would yeah. do much more. I got you. Oh, this is uh, fucking this is dope. Ooh, that's so juicy. Yeah, like I want to get everyone off and into my team, uh, or just deny them the space, really, because like I know that them being distracted with me is them better than them looking down there. No, that was a that was a good pile drive, anyways, and then good boops. It's just kind of an awareness thing again, uh, because we did boop them. Those were good boops, mm. but they took the space anyways. I mean, you got hacked and Paul killed your Zen. And they've got mines. And you know, they're just killing your team, so it's not the very best time to push in now. I think that's what's so satisfying about this, though. It's like goes back to your question from the beginning, that uh, when it starts to cook, you're just waiting for it to be the whole game. 
Like you're, you're getting, you get bits and pieces of it as you get better at it. So that's yeah. really all the only reason why I want to get better at it. It's just, it feels so good when things work. So you yeah. want it always to work. <laughs> the thing about what I call conscious gaming is mm -hmm. when you always doubt your decisions and ask yourself, am I doing a good thing? That way your answers will help you a lot to be consistent. When I learn new heroes, I always think like, if I use this ability right now, what value would it bring? And what if I don't use it? Will anything change? So um, if something works, I try to, you know, keep it going. And if it doesn't, I try to adapt. And that's a thing that you talked about. Like when mm -hmm. something works, it's really pleasant that it works because you, you know, you pre-planned your things. And pre-planning is a very is a very important part of playing, especially characters like uh, Wrecking Balls. Because if you play, <laughs> let's say Cassidy, you don't really need a plan. Because if your aim is good, then you don't really need a plan. You can just ding people on their heads, and that would be alright. I mean, your positioning would matter, but you know, overall, it's all aim in the end while playing Cassidy. So to get consistent, I also suggest you uh, always d doubting your decisions, always thinking about your actions before actually doing them, making them to to be more consistent. So what do you think so far? Um, no, I, I think that um, this is perfect because I, I did learn like two major things is that I need to just chill the fuck out. Basically, one of the things is like, <laughs> Yeah. Relax for a second because when I happen, whether by luck or by actually, maybe I did take a moment in those games when I'm with them and everything is properly timed, it gets so much more. Basically, highlighting how maybe the consistency problem lies in the patience. Maybe if I yeah. chilled out, more of those moments would happen and that would be more consistent. Yeah, you're, I think you're right. But uh, I'm going to say that uh, now that we talked about it and you mm -hmm. gained a lot of knowledge, I hope, <laughs> but uh, it doesn't yet matter that you will immediately improve right after mm -hmm. the game starts, you know, it will come a bit by bit. Your theory is now very well developed, but your practice is not yet there. So sometimes mm -hmm. you might end up making those hasty decisions and right after you die, You'll be like, oh wait, why why would I do this? This is so mm -hmm. So and that's fine. That's absolutely fine. You just have to let your mechanics, let your hands to understand your brain, basically. Your thinking. I get what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs>